So I think that we just need to talk. I feel like we need to have some girl time. We need to chit chat right now because I'm just feeling so guided to share with you like stories and lessons and things that I have learned since I became psychic. And most importantly, I really want to share with you some things that maybe I've never shared before about how opening up to my gifts and becoming psychic has changed my life. And I hope that you enjoy this podcast episode. I hope that you are just feeling like you are sitting down with me and we are having a glass of wine or some coffee or tea. And we are just shooting the shit a little bit while you feel inspired and motivated. This is actually being brought on because I am doing the Psychic AF Scavenger Hunt next week. So if you have not signed up, I have no idea why you haven't signed up because you get a free reading with me if you share it on social media. And if you have not gotten the book to the link to book that free reading with me, then just let me know. Just reach out to me and let me know. There's been some tech glitches happening. Now, if you want to know what in the world the Psychic AF scavenger hunt is, it's basically a scavenger hunt to find your strongest psychic abilities and to also help you connect with your spirit guide. So it's completely free. Each day we have a theme and I'm going to walk you through the themes. I'm going to be giving away some epic prizes. It's always a great time. We'll be meeting on Zoom. There will be replays available. And if you don't want to meet on Zoom, Zoom, then you can watch it right there in the Rise Into Your Power group on Facebook. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be joining. All right. So we are going to have a lot of fun. You're going to be around really good energy. And that is something that's been coming up in readings a lot lately is just being around people that have good energy. All right. So well, let's get started with today's topic, which is how becoming a psychic medium can change your life. And I'm going to tell you how it changed my life. Now, I only have a couple of notes here. So I am really going to be channeling a lot of these memories and things like that, that spirit is telling me to bring forth. Now, in case you don't know, yes, my life was cray cray, like my whole entire life. And never ever in a million years did I ever think I was going to be a psychic medium. I wasn't even sure if I believed in that kind of thing. And if I did, it was definitely only for a select few. A majority of my life, I was scared of anything to do with psychics and mediums and those kinds of things. My stepfather entered my life, I forget how old, maybe like nine or 10 years old, and he was a sorcerer. And so, you know, he actually bought me my first deck of tarot cards when I was 16, I believe it was. He gave it to me a few days before I turned 16. And I did do readings with them, but I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't do prayers of protection. I didn't do any of that stuff. And I never, ever saw it as a psychic connection. In fact, I was working at the Country Fair Flea Market, if you know that, on 8 Mile, and I was working at a booth where I sold watches and maybe some other things to Mount Blanc, you know, knockoff pens and things like that. And that is when I met a psychic for the first time. Now I met her. I did not have a reading with her or anything like that. And I remember going up to her and my father, my stepfather introducing us. And I was just like, oh my God, she's psychic. I was so scared to be in her presence because I was like, oh, she knows everything about me and, you know, she can read my mind and all those kinds of things. So even though I did have those experiences growing up with doing spells and, you know, doing talismans with my stepfather, some really crazy ones, you know, like he would sacrifice animals for some of these spells. And I grew up off of eight mile right outside of Detroit, you know, so this is not a common thing. Okay. You should not be, you know, chasing a live chicken around your house. Now, at the same time, I was like a varsity cheerleader. We made state finals. We did all this stuff, but very few people knew about how weird my house was. Actually, I take that back. I tried to let people not find out about how weird my household was, but they did find out because, you know, when you have animals that are hurt, basically, I, I hate that my stepfather did this, but like he would nail them to the trees out in our front yard and things like that because of the gods and stuff like that it was really crazy things that he was doing. So people kind of knew a little bit. And then for my 16th birthday party, I threw a seance. <laughs> and so I think I told you about that before, but the seance was completely fake 
and not real at all. So I'm so sorry if anybody from high school is listening to this and they thought that it was real, but it was not real. We did that all on purpose, all the theatrics and stuff like that. My stepfather was able to make the chandelier move and he was able to, you know, hide up in the attic and, you know, make the pounding noises while we did the seance and stuff like that. And it was a lot of fun growing up that way. But that was the only part of my life that was very spiritual growing up. Other than that, I grew up Lutheran. And as I got older and I was in and out of, you know, do I believe in God? Do I not believe in God? Do I believe in the Bible? Do I not? I ended up going back to the Lutheran religion. And so that is one thing that I wanted to talk about was when I opened up to my psychic and mediumship abilities, it was like everything made sense sense about my higher power. So one thing that I could never ever get over was where souls come from. And I used to ask my mom this, my grandma this and things like that. And I'm like, where do new souls come from? Like, I don't get it. You know, every single year, every single day, every single minute, there's more and more people being born. So I am like, is there a quota on the other side? Like, where are souls from? I remember thinking that I remember asking that not getting those freaking um, answers that I needed. But I did get that once I went down into spiritual route, you know, the spiritual realm. And so basically it's like, we're all one consciousness, almost like the sun and you are a speck of the sun of the one consciousness. And so it's infinite. There's infinite specks. So it doesn't matter. There is no quota. It's like you were part of the speck that the divine and you break off into having this own little experience that you're having. And then you can go back to that one consciousness after you pass. So it was really interesting. And another thing that really changed my life was knowing that I had help here all of the time and it's not just for the select few. It's not like, okay, God, source, spirit, spirit guides only help out some people and things like that. And also just because you don't hear them doesn't mean they're not helping you and they can't hear you. So I think about some of the most toughest times of my life. And believe me, there were some freaking tough times. Like I was homeless and I had nowhere to freaking go. And I was trying to go to school because I was trying to earn my degree so that I could get a better job so I could take care of my son. And I had no money and I didn't have family that I could stay with. My family was completely toxic. And when I mean toxic, I mean like really bad. Like I've had family members that went ahead and called the cops on me telling people that I was doing drugs and I wasn't. I've been in legal battles before with my family members because they said that I did things that I didn't do. And they almost got my son taken away from me. I'm not kidding. And these are people in my life still that have done this to me. And my name was cleared of some of these things like five to six years later. And no, they have not apologized to me. And do I still talk to them? Yes. <laughs> you know, should I? I don't know. But I know that it's all learning experience. And that happened many, many years ago. But whatever. That's not the point of this conversation. The point of this conversation is that there was a lot of crap going wrong in my life. And I mean, I remember when I got evicted, like I had to move out on Thanksgiving day out of my house because I knew that the sheriff's department was going to be there to throwing all my stuff out, you know, on that Friday because I messed up because I thought that I was going to be able to get help through the state and I messed up on the dates. And so instead of enjoying, you know, fun Thanksgiving food with the family and stuff like that. Now I got to take, I think my son was like seven years old and being like, nope, you got to pack up, pack up your whole room. Where are we going? I have no freaking clue. And so it wasn't the first time that I was homeless. Luckily in this incident that I'm talking about right now, my pastor at my church actually bought me a week at a hotel and guess what ended up happening? He bought me a week at the hotel with his own money because I went to a very small church and we didn't have a lot of money and he was the greatest person on the planet. I still think he is. And I have since paid him back for um, that hotel. And how did I pay him back? I paid him back with the money that I gained, you know, doing psychic and mediumship reading. So isn't that freaking crazy? And so anyways, he paid for me to stay at that hotel. And while I was in that hotel, I went ahead and I begged God every single day, like 10, 20, 500 times a day, please help me find a place. He, please help me find a place by Sunday, by Sunday, by Sunday, by Sunday. No joke. I got the keys to a place by that Sunday within less than a week, a place that I had money for a place that, oh my gosh, I'm going to get a little emotional because a place that I loved, 
I really did love that house. And I got a house and Mason had his own room. It was better than the house before. I had an amazing landlord. Like it was everything. I loved that house so much. And it was only a couple blocks off of eight mile and it might not have been in the best neighborhood, but I didn't freaking care because that was amazing. And that is one thing that has really changed in my life since I opened up to my psychic and mediumship abilities. And that is I have help. I had help then. I asked for help and I got freaking help. So oftentimes when I was going through the roughest times of my life, I didn't ask for help. And that's where a lot of people get caught up. And so going ahead and having psychic and mediumship abilities lets me trust in the fact that I do have help, even though I might not see it. But then it also has opened my eyes to where now I see it all of the time. I see my spirit guides, my past loved ones reaching out to me every single freaking day. I no longer believe in coincidences, synchronicities. I know that's just all of the spiritual realm making themselves known. The other day, I actually had um, breakfast with my aunt and my other aunt, Marcy, right? And I came home. And I went to go sit in my little area of the couch. And when I sat down, I noticed a dime. Normally in my old life, I would just be like, oh, who cares? It's a freaking coin, you know, pick it up. Who cares? No, I picked up the coin and not only did I pick it up, but I knew it was a sign because it was right freaking in front of my couch. And I do not remember it being there. And when I picked up the, the dime, it was 2019. That's the year my mom passed. And so then I was able to connect those dots and be like, yep, mom was with us. The whole entire breakfast and everything else, she was there. And this is her way of letting it be known. So your past loved ones, your spirit guides, your angels, your spiritual entourage is all around you all of the time. But you just might not see it because you might not be immersed in that culture. You might be a little bit afraid. You might be apprehensive. You might be looking at it too much. You might think that it is this grand thing and it's not. I thought that psychic and mediumship abilities were just like any other skill that you have on planet earth, you know, like, oh, I take a piano and I can hear the piano and I can draw. I take the pen to the paper. No, psychic and mediumship abilities is all about like using your imagination. It's all about thoughts and impressions. It's so like soft in a way. It's not out there in your face. Like sometimes it really can be, but that's not the majority of the time. Like I thought that mediums just sat there and just talked to your past loved ones like they are talking to you. And sometimes it can be that way. And sometimes it can be that way for most people or well, some people, but not for most. Most times spirit is going to talk to you through your thoughts, through your impressions and through those ways. So that is a way, huge, ginormous way that spirituality has changed my freaking life. I know that I have guidance. I know that I have help. I know that there is people on the other side. And it's not like this feeling. It's like, oh, I feel a little bit. No, I know that they're there. Even in times when I'm not psychically connected very well, because we're all human, you know, and our body is our vessel. So if we are tired, if we're not eating, if we're sick and things like that, it can go ahead and kind of distort our connection with spirit. But even when that connection is distorted, I have this trust in something bigger than me, something higher than me. And I'm not sure if you heard this story, but it always reminds me of this time when I was just, I can't even tell you how broke I was. I was so broke that I could not even attend my uncle Jim's funeral because I couldn't afford the gas to drive to the funeral home. It was so bad. And I had nobody that I could ask for any kind of money. And I remember my boyfriend's truck at the time, he got a flat tire or whatever. And there was special tires for this freaking truck and we couldn't afford it. It was like two fifty dollars or $300, something crazy for one freaking tire. I didn't know what to do. And at the time I had this picture of Jesus in my hallway and I just walked by it for days and I kept on saying, please help, please help, please help, please help. And so finally, I got this idea to post on Craigslist. Hey, does anybody have this tire? And I put the dimensions of the tire in. You guys, it was just a few hours later when somebody messaged me. Hey, I'm going to look in my rafters in my garage. I think I have one. He did have that exact rare tire. They didn't even have this tire in the tire stores. It was special order. But this guy had it in his freaking garage. He was like, how about 50 bucks? I still want to cry when I hear the story because it saved my freaking life. You know what it's like to be broke and to have your car not work and all these other things. And then someone rescues you. And that was my first impression. Like, oh my God. 
God is real. Jesus is real. And I still believe that way. Still love Jesus. Still love God. I just don't like using that term. I like to use spirit instead. And they are here. And you can literally ask them for help and they will freaking help you. But the problem is you got to freaking ask for their help. All right. And then when I said, oh, I got this idea to post on Craigslist, like it wasn't me. It was spirit downloading that thought. And I always give spirit, God, Jesus, whatever you want to say it, that kudos, that credit, because they did save my life. I think back, especially around those times, I used to draw all these really, really sad cartoons about how I was a McDonald's reject, how I couldn't find any jobs. This was like around 2009 when everything was crashing. It was just one thing after another. Like my boyfriend got laid off from his work and this was like the week before Thanksgiving. And then the day before Thanksgiving, I get told that my place is getting closed down and it was just like horrible and I could not find a job. In fact, I found a job like 11, 12 miles away, which was just like horrible on my gas and and spending more time in the car. And some nights, like all I made was $2.13 an hour because I was a waitress and I only made $17 the whole entire night for like the nine hour shift. Sometimes, like sometimes I, it wasn't even worth for me to go to work, but sometimes I was like, dude, I need that $10 because that $10 could be dinner, you know? And the reason why I'm telling you all of this is because once I opened up to my spiritual gifts, I am not lying or or trying to make it sound better than it is or anything like that. My life changed. I don't have any of those problems anymore. And it's not because I married into money. It's not because, you know, oh, I married my husband and now we have two incomes and things like that. No, like my husband wasn't working when I met him. When we got married, he also wasn't working. He didn't even have his own place. He came and moved in with me and I lived in a basement. Okay. I lived in a little basement, little baby apartment. You had to go to the back door. You had to go down the stairs. There was people that lived upstairs and we had to share the laundry. It was a little one bedroom. My husband said that those weren't even real walls. He was like a little baby pieces of drywall. Oh, I didn't really care what he said because I just thought it was amazing. You know, if you really wanted to call it like a little kitchenette, you know, like it was really funny. One time when our friends came over, well, actually only one friend came over and we decided to play cards, which there was like no room, but he couldn't even stand up and side of the basement apartment because he was too tall. <laughs> That's how I knew my husband was meant for me because he was short. But the reason why I'm telling you this is because it was right then when I met my husband and everything else like that, that I went through my spiritual awakening. And then once I went through my spiritual awakening, I started realizing you have to ask for help. You have people on the spiritual side that are there for you. Like you have to keep on going down your spiritual path because your spiritual path is the biggest part of you. And that's when I like started meditating, started meditating with the monks, you know, I started doing all those little things. And then, you know, what ended up happening? I started just feeling a little bit more faith in the world, in my life, in God, if you will. And that's how I went ahead and I applied at a child care center that was going to double my income. So at the time I was making $10 an hour working as a lead teacher at a development center for children, right? Child care center. And it was really funny because this would have doubled my income. So I went from $10 to like 16 or 17. And this was back in 2011 or 2012. And so that was a huge, huge break for me. In fact, what I was saying is like, I would go to every single person I knew and I'm like, please, please pray. Please pray that I get this. Please pray. Right. And I just kept on asking everybody to pray. So do not underestimate the power of prayer. But the thing is, is that I also had to have the courage in order to apply for this job, you know, and I didn't feel like I was worth it, but my husband said one thing, and this is true. So take this as well. He was like, it is not up to you to decide if you are qualified for the position, it is up to them. It is just your job to put your name in the hat. And bam, I was like, you are right. It is up to them to decide if I am qualified enough for the position. They understand the position more than I do. And everybody that I met um, when I went for that interview was really nice, except for one girl who was taking me around and she was laughing at me for even applying and telling me that there's no way that I was going to get this job. And I got it. And then that job led into other things, which led into other things. Now, 
I'm telling you this because of the power of prayer that changed my life, believing in something bigger than you. And when you have something to hold on to, you are able to be like, okay, I can feel the fear and do it anyways. And even if you're in the beginning of your spiritual relationship and you don't have like a sign for your spirit guide and all these things, and maybe you don't feel connected, just kind of in the back of your mind or even subconsciously, you know, it's there even though you can't connect to it. And that might be enough to help you move forward in your life. It was enough for me at the moments that I'm talking to you about. It's not like I could see spirit or I could feel them or I was doing readings. This is before I even went to Virginia and even figured out how to connect psychically. All I was doing was going down my spiritual path and I was reading some books and I was learning about angels and how they can help you. Probably I was still scared of angels because like, Who's not going to be scared of an invisible being standing next to you? Like, I was freaking out. I'm like, there's an angel with me. Like, where is he? (laughs) You know, like, is he in the car with me right now? So just know that you are in good hands. All right. You are in good hands. Pray all the time. Ask for help all of the time. Don't do this in vain. All right. So let's move on. So I ended up going ahead and changing my physical environment and also doing so much better in my life financially. I ended up getting a beautiful house, like a dream house that I ended up apparently buying in the same neighborhood that I would come into with my ex. We came and drove around this neighborhood and we were like, oh, too rich for our blood. And we freaking left because we didn't think we could ever afford it. I'm like, no, this is where really rich people live. And not only do I have an amazing house in this neighborhood, but I think I have like the best freaking house. I think it has like the best view of the lake. I think it's the best everything. Well, I guess I could change the color a little bit and definitely needs to be updated in the inside, but you get my gist, okay? Sometimes I would just rather spend money on travel and things like that and maybe tarot cards than, you know, renovating the house. Who else is with me on that? But see, the thing is, is that never in my life did I ever think that I would own a house. Never in my life did I think I'd be living off of a lake or going on these trips and traveling and all these other things. There's no way. I remember the first time that I went to New York as an adult with my husband and my sister texted me. She was like, oh my God, Heather, did you ever think in your life that you would be just going to New York on a vacation? Like, no, we didn't go on vacations. Like my family was po. My mom said that we were so poor, we were po. We were so poor, we couldn't afford the OR, all right? And so here I was like just doing one trip one time with my husband to New York. You know, I think it was for the weekend. But now, dude, I travel all the time. I travel too much. Like I don't want to travel anymore. You know, I want to be home for a little bit, you know? You know, I just can go off to Las Vegas on a whim and things like that. And that is because I trust in the universe. I trust in something higher than me. It's because I open up to my abilities too, because do you think that I go anywhere without tuning into spirit first? And I'm like, no, hey, like, how is this going to go? You know, should I go there? Is this for my highest good? Sometimes I have to back out of plans. And that is because I feel guided to no longer do that. You know, and it's because it might not be good for the person. It might not be good for me. It might be bad traveling. Something else might come up. I might be sick that day, you know, or that week or they might get sick. Like that happens all the time. So when you go ahead and you tune in, you know, and you have your psychic senses, it's like it is so freaking convenient. And this is something that everybody needs to be doing with their life. You need to be living in cohesiveness with spirit because If you don't, then that's when a whole bunch of crap can happen. You know, that's what was happening to me. I was trying to do everything by myself. And that's the reason why that I was spinning my wheels, not getting anywhere where I was always freaking broke and also very, very sick, which is my next point. Ever since that I've opened up spiritually, I have been healthier than I've ever been. Yes, I've had a lot of freaking surgeries, you know, but (laughs) because I have messed up my body, because if you're an empath, and you're not taking care of yourself, you are going to be susceptible to a lot of crap, all right? Because your body is taking the rough end of the stick of it. Sorry, there's like a spirit standing behind me. So I feel like somebody really needs to hear this. They're walking back and forth behind me. Um, It definitely feels like a woman um, in spirit, but I'm not going to tune into her, but she's just like walking back and forth. I don't know why she's freaking pacing, but whatever. Oh, you know what? I actually have a reading after this. So maybe it's her, but If you felt like that woman was for you, it's probably you as well. It might be more than one of them back here because it feels like there's just like a whole bunch of spirits walking behind me. So sorry about that. Anyways, we're talking about health. (laughs) All right. So before I 
woke up spiritually. Everybody knows the story how, oh, I had seizures. And then that's when I woke up. But the thing is, though, is before I even had my seizures, like I was always in the freaking urgent care. All right. I would be working two jobs, double shifts, things like that. In between, I would go to the freaking urgent care. There would be like, oh, you have a double ear infection. You have a lung infection. Oh, you have pneumonia. And I'd go right back to freaking work again. Because guess what? I had to freaking work because I needed to pay my bills. Right. I needed that extra money. There was none of this like, oh, you know, I'll just take a day off. No, there ain't no rest for the freaking wicked. Okay. I got to get freaking put food on my table and I need freaking gas money. You know, one time I actually showed up at a gas station. And I had no freaking money and I had no more gas. And so the gas attendant had to give me, like he gave me $2 to put some gas in my tank so that I could drive to someone's house to get some money to come back, put more gas in my car and also to pay him back. Like I've had it bad. Right. But my health was really, really bad. So I would be going into the urgent care for dizziness, low sugar. One time I had like this horrible freaking thing happening with my lips. Like I was always constantly sick. So number one, if you're always constantly sick, make sure that you're freaking shielding yourself. You have to have spiritual boundaries, all those kinds of things. But since I have been open, yes, I've had these surgeries and things like that. But what I feel like those surgeries are, they are basically, I don't want to say consequences, but because I didn't take care of my body for so long and my health for so long, that that's what happened, you know, is that they were kind of like, it was waiting to happen. It was almost like a healing part of my body. Like with my elbow, I wasn't taking care of my arm, wasn't, you know, taking care of my elbow and things like that. And then I had to have, you know, the cubital tunnel surgery to be able to um, fix it. So it's a lot of my surgeries are actually healing me from my issues. Okay. If that makes sense. I really like hated my body back in the day, like before I woke up and stuff like that. In fact, I remember thinking too, like, why in the world do we even come here? Like working this human body sucks. Like I wouldn't have minded if I was able to come here and I didn't have to worry about eating and going to the bathroom and all these other things and taking care of this body. Like it'd be so much easier. And that's when I realized when I, after I woke up was that's the part of being human is taking care of this body is because we have to nourish it and because they have to eat it and because we have to move it. And it is freaking daunting sometimes. And it sucks sometimes, you know, when you have the, you know, like a, not the greatest outlook on it, but yeah, over on the other side, we don't have a body. We don't have to worry about that. And that's the thing is we didn't come here to experience the other side. We came here to have this body, to learn how to work with it and you know, it, all of its limitations. All right. So now, Another thing that truly changed when I woke up to my spiritual gifts is my relationships with people. Now, I see it completely different. So remember in the beginning when I talked to you about some of the toxicity within my family, like I see it way differently now. And I see them as just souls on this journey. And no, I do not see myself as better than them. I do not see myself as more evolved than them. I feel like each and every single one of us is on a completely different path that we cannot compare to another person's path. We have no idea what kind of stuff that they signed up for. We have no idea what kind of things they dealt with in past lives or even in this lifetime. You know, one thing that I used to always say, and I still do say time to time, but it's like, wow, like all the trauma that I've been through. I've been through so much trauma with this person, that person, and big ginormous you know, traumas, you know, how many people that, you know, I put in prison and, you know, how many people that I've had to have like legal issues with that were, you know, found guilty of felonies and things like that. And it's like big ginormous ones, but it doesn't matter how many big ginormous ones that I've been through. I cannot compare it to other people and not because other people have been through even more ginormous traumas. I know that they have, but trauma is subjective. And with all the healing that I've done around a lot of my traumas, it wasn't the big ginormous ones that had the most negative effect on me. It was the little baby ones. And so sometimes people can have traumatic events with just one little word that someone says to them that crushes their soul, that breaks their heart, that changes the course of their life. And so changing up my relationships and how I've seen them because of my spiritual gifts has changed my life completely. I have so much more compassion for people. I also have, and I'll just be honest, I have a lesser tolerance for BS. 
So that means when people want to gossip, when people want to be on a high horse, when people want to tell me stupid things, when people want to be in their victim mentalities and, you know, be energy vampires, I really do not have a big tolerance for that. And I do not respond in a negative way. I respond in sweet, compassionate, nice and kindness way because they need that but they are not going to be able to take my energy and they are not going to give me any yucky energy. I don't want that. So I definitely try my best to keep my relationship energy cleansed. And what I mean by that is I don't allow yucky people into my life and I don't allow yucky text messages, emails, and those kinds of things into my life. And when I respond, I respond with kindness. So for example, I have had a family member reach out to me recently and just went off about all these horrible things that happened to them and how they are the victim and it sucks. This is always happening to them. Now, this family member, I have tried to help out a zillion and one times. You have, you know, just like me, I have tried to give them advice. I've tried to help. I've tried to be the compassionate ear for decades. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. That one person that just will not change. This is that person. But I didn't say, hey, I don't want any of this negative energy in my life. No. They said, hey, I'm venting and blah, 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 and just ugh, yuckiness. And you know what I responded with? vent anytime, vent anytime. It is okay. I hate that you're going through this. I wish that things were different for you. But the thing is I was emotionally detached and I also shielded my phone and that energy. So the energy didn't come with me. And so my relationships have improved immensely. And then I have like better boundaries and the key to boundaries, because we hear about this all the time, the key to boundaries is that you have to uphold what you will and will not accept from other people. When people are like, they won't respect my boundaries. That's not a thing. It's they push your boundaries and that you are not able to uphold them. Like they push your buttons just like a freaking toddler would or does. And so that's the only thing is that when I opened up to my spiritual gifts, what ended up happening was that it gave me not only the confidence in the higher power, like we just talked about, but it also gave me power within myself to where I felt a lot better. Like I felt like, Hey, I deserve to have peace in my life too. I deserve to have love. I deserve to feel good. And it's okay that I'm not everything for everybody. Now that is the biggest point ever is that we empath sensitive spiritual people, if you are listening to this, you want to help everybody because you can see how incredibly yeah, how tough that people are having the tough times. And, you know, you want to be able to help because maybe you've been there and then you've done that or because your heart bleeds for them because you have so much compassion. I know I've been there. I've done that. And I still try to help out as much as I can. But because I know that they have a spiritual team because I know they have past loved ones and angels and stuff like that. And their past loved ones, their angels, their spirit guides can handle their problems way better than I can freaking handle them. So I pray that their spirit guides help them. I pray that they find some help. I, I pray that they can help them because I can't take on everything. I already take on enough as it is, right? We all have like our close family members, our kids or whatever, our spouses, maybe our siblings and stuff like that, that we try to help out. We can't help out every single person. And when we are on the other side, I feel like many of us are spirit guides for other people. And we are trying to help out on such a grand scale and we love it. And we might even become addicted to that feeling. And so then when we incarnate here on earth, we want to do the exact same thing we did on the other side, but we can't because we're limited because we have these bodies and we have have these physical and human limitations and it freaking sucks. And so it always seems like what we do is not enough. Do you ever feel that way? Like what you do is never enough. You can never help out enough people that you feel like no matter what you say, what you do, it's just that maybe it falls on deaf ears or you just feel like it just wasn't enough or you should do more. And that is because it's a part of your soul. It's part of your soul that wants to help, but you have limits. You cannot do everything. You have this physical body. And so opening up to my gifts allowed me to see that and allowed me to see that everybody has that connection with their spiritual team. Whether or not they want to use it, that's different. My goal is just to try and show people that it is possible, that they do have this connection. They're able to do this. They have this help. 
You know, it's almost like we have a phone home, you know, speed dial that every single one can push this button, but not a lot of us are. And sometimes it can be tough to push that button too, because you have to understand, well, you probably do understand this. And that is, you know, it's taboo, it's wrong. Psychic mediumship is wrong and all these other things. So it's just like, oh, let's be, we have, we've got to get over that, you know? Um, and the more that we are open or we try to be open, even with the people that we're close to or practicing our gifts, that will help the society change us over into something that's a little bit more normal. And I think it is happening. You know, I said this before, it's like we have tarot cards and Oracle cards that are being sold at Barnes and Noble. Before you know it, you, you will, you'll see them at the corner store, which that's kind of funny because they do have affirmation cards being sold at Walmart, not Walmart, Walgreens and CVS and all those things. So it is becoming more mainstream. And I just hope that more and more people realize that it's not all woohoo. You know, it's based a lot in science and in reality. So I do want to say though, that going ahead and opening up to my spiritual gifts and my psychic and mediumship abilities has truly just transformed my life in the most craziest of ways to where when I think back on my journey, there's no way that I would have ever felt like I was here. I am so much more in tuned. I'm so much more calmer. I'm so much more at peace. And the biggest thing too is I definitely don't really have a fear of death anymore. I see death as completely different. That is the biggest thing is that I want to like plan my funeral before I leave because I do not want a typical funeral at all. I want it to be like a celebration party. Like don't feel bad for me. I'm going back home. That means that my schoolwork here on earth is done. Like I do not see death anymore is the same way as other people do. It's like, I know it's sad because you're not going to see them in the physical world anymore. But a part of me is like, they graduated. They're done with this place. They, they're done with school. They did it. If they weren't meant to pass, then they wouldn't have. God would have intervened and stopped them, but they were meant to go. Why and how and all these other questions you might have. And you can figure those things out once you pass. But until then, it's like I see death as something that is completely different. I see it as, you know, I don't want to say a celebration, you know, because it's sad that they left. But I see it as like, man, they went home. They were done with their lessons. They were done with this life. They got another, like, how do you call this? Like when the service members like deployment, you know, it's like, we're all here deployed to earth for a certain amount of time. We don't know when we're going to get called back to home base, which is the other side. And so when other people get to go, it's like, yeah, just imagine being in the army, being overseas and you are in this war, right? You just don't know what to expect. And then your friend gets called home. And then they're going to leave you and it's going to suck, right? Because you've been there with this battle buddy in this war for however many long. And now they're getting called home and they're gone. And they're going to leave you and it's going to suck. It's going to be sad. But wouldn't you also be a little bit happy for them? Like, man, at least they went home. Like <laughs> a part of me is like, I can't wait till I go home. But no, you know, you've got to stay here. We got to fight this war here on earth, right? And we got to be here together. And so that is one of the biggest things that I don't talk about enough is how opening up to the spiritual gifts has really helped me think differently about death. It's like, it just makes me feel so much better. Like when people die, yeah, I'm sad. Believe me, I've lost a lot of people in the last few years. But the thing is, is that I know that there's going to be signs as soon as I'm ready to see them. I know they're going to be talking to me. And I understand that it's not going to be like way out there and woohoo, because we come here to have amnesia, you know, to, you know, be a little bit woo behind the scenes and behind the curtain but I know that they're around. I know that they're my cheerleaders on the other side. This is not a feeling. This is a knowing. Like this is something that I know in the deepest part of my soul. And with death too, I have felt so differently about life since I opened up to my psychic and mediumship gifts. Life is truly a freaking game. We're down here to explore, to have fun. This is our school. And by the way, there is some major like crazy places where we can incarnate. I've heard that earth is one of the hardest, but the thing is that I've seen what Mars looks like, right? I've seen what Jupiter looks like. I've seen some of those ones and I'm really happy that I'm not there. I'm happy that I'm here because it's a beautiful freaking planet. We have some crazy freaking landscapes here. We have like the desert, but then we have the rainforest, you know, and then we have, you know, just normal suburban 
suburban, you know, freaking, um, what is those called? Neighborhoods. And then we also have, you know, the, uh, the redwood tree forest, you know, we have some Stonehenge. We have like what all, whatever Australia looks like. We have so many cool places here on earth, you know, it's like, wow, this is a crazy place and it's freaking beautiful. And life is a game. So here's my little thing is that what spirituality has taught me. And I probably only learned this in the last, I would say less than a year. And that is whenever I'm scared to do something, whenever I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I want to do this, all those things. I just think about when I cross over on the other side and what I'm going to think about because I bailed, you know, so whenever you get scared, like, oh, I don't want to go to this party by myself, you know, oh, I don't want to do this event because it costs $30 or whatever it is. It's like, when you go to the other side, you might get yourself in the butt for not having that freaking experience. And then you're going to be like going out to all of your best friends over there. You're going to be like, oh, I didn't do it. Why not? Because it costs $50. And, you know, I only had 500 in my bank account and I was worried about the money. And they're going to be like, hey, we would have helped you if you would have asked, you know. And so it's like, don't let so many opportunities and things like that pass you by because you have not enough money, not enough time, not enough energy. It's like, if you don't have any of that stuff, then ask for it. Because when you go to the other side, you're going to kick yourself in the butt that you didn't do it. Think about some of the things that you didn't do when you were a teenager, you know, or when you were a young adult, like my husband was stationed over in Germany and he never freaking traveled and he regrets that now. Yeah. Cause you can literally go on a bus and go traveling all over the freaking countries on the freaking weekend, you know? So maybe, you know, this will inspire you that life is a game. Stop taking it so seriously. You can figure it out. It's truly where there is a will, there is a freaking way. All right. So that is what we need to do. And that's what spirituality has taught me and my psychic gifts and my mediumship gifts. It's like when I opened up to them, that's when I freaking really realized, okay, I can tune in any moment and see if this is for my highest good. If this is something that's going to make me happy, if this is going to give me the results that I want, you know, and you can do this. You can do this all the time. And it's a lot of freaking fun, you know? And even if you are somebody who can't afford $50, you can't afford $5, you can't afford $1, don't stop living and making excuses up because you don't have money. You know how many fun times that I've had literally just this weekend making no freaking money? Like me and my husband went outside and we just played catch. I suck at playing catch. Okay. I hurt myself constantly all of the time, but the thing is, it still doesn't stop me from going out there and having a freaking blast. You know, I'm always constantly laughing. My husband's always making fun of me. It's hilarious. I love it. You know, so you can do picnics. You can go ahead and eat outside for dinner. You can go camping in the backyard. You know, you can do so many fun things. You know what me and my husband do? We literally have a mattress in our other living room. We have two living rooms. I understand I'm um, privileged in that aspect, but we have a freaking mattress in the other room. And every like Friday or Saturday night, we'll have date night and we will watch TV on the mattress. Now I have this mattress because I got a new one and then I haven't gotten rid of that one yet. And a part of me doesn't want to get rid of it because nobody ever goes in that living room anyways. So who cares? I have a freaking mattress in my front living room and it's fun because I get to watch TV in bed in my living room and it's fun. And then sometimes I will force my husband to sleep out there like overnight. And then we have a little camp out. You know what I did? I freaking made him sleep in the freaking sunroom once because I'm like, wouldn't it be fun to sleep in a sunroom that has like a skylight and stuff like that? And it'd be so much fun. You know how much money that costs? That costs nothing. So you can do this. You can find different ways to have fun and have life be a game. And that's one thing that my spiritual side, that my psychic gifts opened me up. It's because I know that our time here is finite. And so I want to have as much fun as freaking possible. So we need to decrease the stress and find the fun. And yet, sometimes we can't help our financial endeavors. We can't help, you know, our jobs and things like that. But we can help how we respond to things and the fun that we bring into our lives. You know, you can go ahead and have fun in the freaking kitchen. You just anywhere, literally anywhere, anytime that you can have fun. And don't say, well, I'm going to have fun later on because no, that's not how it works. You decide to have fun and then you have it. Not like, oh, when this happens, I'll have fun. No, you have fun now. All right. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode with me. I hope that you enjoyed just like shooting the shit and having a cup of coffee or some water or some wine or maybe something even stronger than that with me. And again, if you haven't signed up for the scavenger hunt, do it. Okay. I'm going to help you out. It's totally free. You get a free reading with me. So I really don't understand why you don't. Okay. The link will be in the show notes and reach out to me anytime. And until then, I hope that you're living a spiritual AF life.